In this video, I want to share five things I wish I knew when I was in pharmacy school. This video is really in response to lots of messages and comments I get from pharmacy students and even like pre-pharmacy students who look up to me and I'm truly honored uh, for that. And I definitely wanted to share my experiences and the mistakes I made and wanted to give you good piece of advice that would help you not make the mistakes that I've made. So before I really get into the video, I really want to share one quote that totally inspires me and I truly believe in. And that is that the doors we open and close each day decide the way we're going to live our lives. It is so beautiful. So really, sometimes we have to make, uh, you know, wiser decisions that are definitely going to help us in long runs. And that's why sometimes I desperately wish I could go back in time and teach myself the lessons I've learned now and not make the same mistakes I did in pharmacy school. Well, I cannot go back and fix any of that, but I can definitely hope that you can learn from my experience and mistakes and be able to start your pharmacy career on the right foot. So in today's video, I want to share five pieces of advice that I wish someone would have told me when I was in pharmacy school. I think the first and most important one I want to start with is find a good mentor. This is very important, but honestly, very hard to get. You need a mentor that not only guides you in career path, but also matches you personality wise. And it might take you some time and a few different people like, you know, sometimes good or bad to kind of find the compatibility and find someone that you can trust and learn from. But I would say just don't give up. Keep trying until you find the one that one special person who's literally going to mentor you and help you in the career path. You know, having a mentor really helps you stay focused and organized. Like for me, uh, when I was in pharmacy school, I was totally on my own. I would get overwhelmed all the time and I was playing catch up on all of my assignments all the time. And because of not having a mentor, I didn't really know uh, what should I prioritize and what not? What should I, um, you know, learn and what should I put on the back burner? I would just try to learn and cram sometimes like everything, like every word of pharmacology. And that was so overwhelming that I would eventually like just forget every, everything and I would be totally blank. So I would say find a mentor who can help you start the basics. See, now when I look back, I think of pharmacology and I say, I should have just started with the basics. For example, you know, instead of trying to remember all the side effects or everything of a specific drug class, I should have just tried to remember unique characteristics of each drug class. Maybe I should have kept my notes organized for a quick review before exam. Uh, you know, maybe sh I should have focused on reviewing my study material daily instead of like literally pulling out an all nighter before, you know, the exam. Also, especially for pharmacology, I personally think like I should have devised mnemonics and I should have started internship early on in the pharmacy school to help me remember and retain the pharmacology I was studying in the school. See, I tried to figure out everything myself because I didn't have a mentor. So most of my time in pharmacy school, like I said before, I was overwhelmed. I was stressed. I was underprepared. So definitely seek out either, you know, one of your seniors as a mentor or find an established pharmacist who's been there, who's done it, and now is practically getting the real taste or the, is practically getting the real world taste of pharmacy. The second thing I wish I knew when I was in pharmacy school was getting on an early exposure of healthcare field. Like, I'm not talking about just the retail pharmacy, but other healthcare fields um, like hospitals, uh, industrial, uh, you know, uh, pharmaceutics, 
also maybe research and development. And I did not start volunteering at a hospital and a retail pharmacy until after my pharmacy school. And it was then that I realized that the practical world of pharmacy is so much different than the theoretical world. And at the time, I would say that it was kind of so late for me to have an exposure of other healthcare fields. You know, I didn't have time to expose myself to every field because I had already finished the pharmacy school and now I needed to find the job. The pressure was real. So I had only worked in hospital and retail. I knew clinical or hospital wasn't for me. So I started working in retail. Now, had I started my internship or volunteer work from the first year of pharmacy school, I would have been able to explore, you know, pharmaceutical industry, research and development, nursing homes and other fields. And then when it was time for me to find a job, I would have more choices because of more exposure and experience. Also, early on internship would have helped me build my resume you know it would have provided me with the work experience i would have put my education into practice you know maybe learn customer care experience and other professional skills and attributes which would have helped me uh, you know progress faster in my pharmacy career now not that i'm saying that i didn't get all the exposure and experience when i started working I did learn all of that, but I was very naive to everything. I remember my first year working as a grad intern. I knew nothing. Uh, my supervising pharmacist would like ask me to do consultation or just, you know, ask me consultation points of certain medications. And I'd look at him with a black face wondering how in the world am I supposed to remember all of that? But literally, let me share a tip with you that don't be overwhelmed by seeing your seniors and other pharmacists like literally going through the consultation points so fast without even looking at anything and don't be overwhelmed and wonder how they are able to retain all that medication information. It's simply by practice. Practice makes a man perfect. I didn't get the practice and exposure early on so I had to struggle. But now that I have enough practice, literally, Anyone can wake me up in the middle of night and ask me consultation points of any medication and I will not hesitate or think even for a moment and I'll just like go on. And now I am seven years into my pharmacy career. Imagine had I started internship in my first year of pharmacy school that would have added five years of experience to the existing seven years. But on a positive note, I've made the mistake, I've learned from it, and now I'm sharing my experience with you so you can get early exposure. My third tip is to learn to use resources. Pharmacists are considered experts in medicines, be it uses, adverse effects of the medications, interactions, contraindications, you name it and we'll find the answer for you. Now, if you don't know the answer, we'll look it up for you, not a problem. But we are experts of medicines. So when you don't know a certain information about a medication and you, you know, tell a friend or a patient or a doctor that you'll get back to them, you go to a reliable source. Don't go to your friend Google. Google does not provide authentic information. And it's true, there's a lot of information on medications that I agree we cannot remember at all. So we have to be able to look up authentic resources and we have to get in the habit of looking them up all the time so they are at our fingertip or just maybe one click away or just looking at a book away and we shall be able to find the answer. Like you should know what books to refer to for drug interactions, any uh, lactation and uh, pregnancy specifications, any pharmacy laws, pharmacology, comparable brands and generics. Now, these resources should be your best friend, not just in the pharmacy school, but also when you're working as a pharmacist. Like I refer to clinical pharmacology and also I refer to facts and comparison anytime I have to look up something. So, so I know that I'm finding the answer from an authentic source and I can represent myself authentic and a reliable source to my patients, friends, and healthcare professionals. The fourth thing I really wish I knew when I was in pharmacy school is something 
even to date, I sometimes like think of going back and doing this. Um, and that is taking a business management class. If you want to grow in pharmacy field and want to pursue into the management side, be it you know in retail pharmacy, clinical or pharmaceutical industry, business management will literally help you shine and it will literally be a cherry on the top. Because think about it, this is a time when healthcare industry is modernizing and has become a billion dollar industry which requires a great deal of business management. And a majority of pharmacists will confirm that business management skills really affect their everyday responsibilities to a great extent. And if you get business management class, that would definitely make an impact on your future roles. Like if you want to get into executive pharmacy management or you know, you wanna get in a regional leadership role. I would say last but not the least, I wish I had started networking from pharmacy school. It's very important. The temporary pain of spending time growing your network will far overpay in dividends in the future. And you must, I would say, spend time growing your network because if you don't, job opportunities won't be there for you after you've received your degree. And as you grow your network, be sure to cultivate it. Don't just go on your life and never say hi to people that you were networking in past. Make an effort to regularly connect with your contacts because you never know who's gonna be there when you need help, right? And also you never know when, when the hospital or the pharmacy you're working at might shut down and, and somebody that you have links with in another field can literally offer you a job opportunity. Another thing I would say is that to ensure that your network is alive when you need it, you should make an effort to do volunteer work, uh, maybe help a friend organize a meeting or a professional event. And don't just think of networking just in terms of pharmacy. You know, people from a wide range of profession may sometimes offer advice and assistance when needed. For example, when I planned on starting my YouTube channel, I was completely naive of this field. My networking really helped me understand all the ins and outs of it and how I can leverage the power of social media to convey my message beyond just the four walls of pharmacy. I would say these are the little things I really had to invest more time and energy after I you know, stepped into my pharmacy career Basically, I gathered them with experience and now I'm sharing them with you. So you don't make these mistakes and you learn from them. You know, by learning these lessons and following these tips, you can be on your way to being a much farther ahead than I was during my time in pharmacy school. I think even though some of these suggestions really involve um, sacrifice and are time consuming, but honestly, these are well worth the time and literally will set you up for a successful transition from a student to a professional pharmacist. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you have any questions or video suggestions, don't hesitate to write in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time with another video on health, pharmacy and beauty. Until then, take care, bye.